Okay, I'm Nisha, TNE's spooktacular host. <laughs> Get it? Spooktac. In Paranormal Night Shift, Heather recounts this chilling series of events where she had encounters with a ghost named Sarah. It's a sneak peek. Now, since this is our first episode with me as your host, I'm feeling like giving, you know? Let's give away one spooky prize to a lucky viewer. And you guys are gonna find out how to do that if you watch till the end. Now, without further ado, let's talk to Heather. Let's see what she has to say about this encounter with Sarah. Hi, Heather. How are you? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm oh, good. I'm I'm not being haunted at the moment, but you know, so I'm good. Um, <laughs> I, I watched your story and um, I just, okay. The first thing I want to ask about that story because it was, it was very creepy um, is, what does it feel like? You said you, were, you felt a presence, but like, what does that feel like for somebody who's never experienced that? Um, I felt Sarah's presence because when she was anywhere near me uh, or in the same room, um, my face would go red and I'd start sweating. And uh, I felt this really unsettled feeling in my body. Oh. So I knew when she was around. That sounds like when I have too much hot sauce on my Chinese food. <laughs> like that but yeah but it come and then um, and uh, because she had taken on my 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 face and my persona in in other yeah. situations to my staff so it's like she entered my body when she was in the room that, that's so hard like that's so like that she'd steal your persona that I mean yeah, that's several so, people that, thought her l looking like me. That's so... I don't even know how to, like... They th so, it's like, if you think you see someone, but it it's you, like, like when you think somebody's looking at you, but no one's actually there, is what I imagine it feels like. But, like, when they look, turn to look, they see you, or, like, you, they think it, it feels like it's you? They see... My, uh, a couple times my staff had seen me uh, when I wasn't there, in a red dress. It's very troubling. It's very, very troubling. Um, they were very freaked out, as was I. That's a hard one to glide by, but... Yeah, I mean, if you're going to jump into my body and take over my soul, I mean, all these things came into my mind. So yeah, was, like, what do you start, like, what like what kind of worries does that bring up? Like, You know what? I just always tried to make friends with her. I never, ever criticized her. I never got mad I just uh, rolled with it and tried to make her my friend because I figured if she'd chosen me then she must like me and so we're gonna become friends hmm. so what what do you know about how Sarah died it was known in the community um, uh, and throughout people in Toronto that knew about particular buildings downtown that had um, ghosts um, and it was well known that she had been set up at the altar when she was 18. Uh, that's what that's what we've that's what we've been told. 18, and when she got set up at the altar back then in the 1800s, you were basically done as a woman. So she hung herself in her wedding dress upstairs on the third floor. That that is, I mean, it kind of makes you understand a little bit why she's still around because she's so young exactly so and but like making friends with her is interesting for um for other reasons because she does get a little hands-on or she does do something a little physical so but i have another question first we'll, we'll get in, we'll get into that that was the most troubling thing but we'll get into that after we talk about the beginning of your story um in paranormal shift um you mentioned that before you invested in the Looking Glass restaurant. There were previous owners who were unsuccessful. Um, yeah. Do you know anything about the, any of the other haunted establishments in the area or any of the previous owners? Uh, the previous owners, uh, I, the, the previous owner before I took it over were two really good friends of mine. And they were, they tried to be, I mean, they were very successful restaurateurs and they went in and they just couldn't make it and money went missing and 
um, they just lost everything. And so they just closed the doors and walked away. Um, other, the ones after, before them, the same thing happened to them. And it's a beautiful location. There's no reason why this location doesn't work. And then it, it was me in there. And then, you know, it was just a rough five years. And then another very successful restaurateur went in and she lasted two years and she couldn't make it either. Like it, nobody can make it work in there. And is it all because they're haunted or is it because they just have bad luck? You know what? For successful restaurant owners in, in, in Toronto that own other properties, it just seems like something, there's always something going wrong. Like the ones before me, the money would disappear. And, and restaurants, like, yeah, that could be stock, whatever. But um, they also uh, knew of her presence in there, but nobody had been affected by her as much as it, she she was attached to me. But they were two guys, and maybe it's a different, you know, maybe she was just looking for a woman to, to, uh, uh, communicate with. Mm, that's, a good, that's a good point. That is, I never thought about that. Um, well, maybe, maybe she laid her hopes in me, but <laughs> I'm well, not getting married anytime soon. <laughs> well, maybe that's why she is like trying to emulate your energy. It's like the feminine energy she never got to be. That, that's, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, well, maybe I she mean, never, it's she troubling. Sorry, maybe she always wanted to be a, a businesswoman or have the power that we do as women in this day and age. I mean, she never had any of that or kids. Um, and back then, you know, the, the women were there basically have kids, right, in the 1800s. Yeah. But the 1800s, oh, I, I mean, I would have to look into that, but I'm, I would imagine that they things were different. Um, yeah. Are you able to communicate with Sarah now? Uh, you know what, she, her presence uh, sort of stayed with me uh, a little bit after we left the Looking Glass. Once in a while, if I'm talking about her, uh, she'll be in the room. Uh, yesterday when I was talking about her, um, she uh, didn't seem to be near me. And as of right now, she doesn't appear to be near me, um, which makes me think that either enough time has passed or she knows that we're friends and I'm not saying anything against her. So I'm hoping that she's just sort of welcoming this whole process of sharing her story. Hmm. Do you, do you know why, uh, do you know why Sarah hated Valentine's day so much? Like was, did that have any yes. connection to? Yeah, but it's because she, was never able to, to be in that situation with her husband uh, or a loved one, to be able to go out and celebrate the love of somebody because she lost her love because he stood her up at the altar. So she um, hated that whole experience of seeing people in love sharing a romantic dinner. Um, and so she would turn the lights on and off and turn the music on and off. And it happened every Valentine's Day. I mean, the, the candles would flicker. So eventually I just incorporated that whole process into my advertising campaign to come and have this unusual Valentine's dinner. Things will happen, but don't worry. We're in, nothing's going to happen to you. Uh, and it happened every Valentine's Day. I wonder if any, like, I don't know if you know who owns that restaurant now or... I do. Oh, yeah? Do you, yeah. I wonder, it, do you, have you been in contact with them? You know what, it's a very interesting concept they have. They call it the nerdiest restaurant and bar in Canada. And it's all full of things from video games. So it's kind of creepy right now in there, like going down the stairs, down the stairs to the washroom. So they've got skulls and everything on the walls. And every room has is, is got different crazy video things. It's it's a little bit scary in there. It's, it's uh, The building is actually called the mansion. It actually, the way he has it now set up, it, it feels more... Um, outer worldly you know she has come to visit me when I've not been in the restaurant but I did go back after the, after I closed the restaurant I did other events there uh, once a year before the new owners took it over I went in there and did events and it was all the same it was all the same she was there and, and uh, money would disappear again and, and lights would flicker again so that was she was still in there uh, but then after I, I stopped doing events in there, I think maybe uh, a year or two after, when the other, the new restaurant people came in. Um, and 
yes, I, she's visited me a few more times outside of the restaurant. But as I say, lately she seems to have not been around. Hmm. I wonder if is that a is that a good thing? Do you do you do you miss her? I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of waiting. I'm kind of waiting for her to appear right now. I'm kind of waiting for this my body thing to happen where I start sweating and my face goes red and. But um, it's really uncomfortable, so I kind of hope she doesn't do it. Okay. Because <laughs> it kind of takes my breath away, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a little scary. Okay. The, that was my next question. Like, just it happening, isn't it? Like, I don't know, wouldn't it be more friendly to not put your friend through that? Um, but I guess that's how you communicate, or I guess how that... Well, sneaky, that too. Way. She likes to like have fun, too, you know? I mean, maybe it's fun for her to come in and go, hey, I know you're talking about me. Guess what? I'm here. Um, and she's done that a few other times. I guess. That's... So when this is okay, this this one when I saw it, I had a big reaction to it. But when Sarah got physical with you, like how did yeah. that how did the impact feel? Like did it does it feel like somebody pushing you, and you can feel like it touching you, or like what what is it like? Oh yeah, no, that one time when I was when I was uh, um, taking an order at a table, um, the first time it was a. Like a gentle tap, but I could certainly feel it. My shoulder went back, and I turned around and I said, "Not now, Sarah." And the table is looking at me, like there's nobody there, Heather. Um, but um, then I just said, "Oh, hi, that's funny. You know, house haunted, whatever. Just ignore it." And then I continued to take the order, and then she really banged me. So I lost my, I don't, I mean, I stood, don't stay on my feet, but I lost my balance. And then it was, then it was just. Like, you know, I, I don't know what to, I mean, my table's looking at me and they're, they're starting to get scared now, like what's going on, because I'd already told them, it, you know, the building was haunted and don't worry about it, because I didn't think she was going to hit me a second time. So I, I, oh, I felt it. I felt the, I felt like a punch on my shoulder. A punch? Yeah, like a, like a, like a shove, like a really hard, heavy shove. Did that, okay, so that's more than once. So she hit you the first time and it was like, okay, leave me alone, Sarah. And then the yeah. second time, it's like, oh, you want you want to fight, Sarah. So what was, the, didn't you want to, like, figure out, were you, like, trying to Google how to fight ghosts or, like, try to get her back? Or were you even worried that she might push you into, like, a dangerous situation? Yeah. Oh, no, there were times when I was driving, and I think, you know, what if she comes right now and, like, steers me off? I mean, does she have control of my body? This is what you don't know with spirits and ghosts. When will they enter your body again, and how much control can they take of you? And I mean, luckily, because like I said, I think if I think if you irritate a spirit, they could come back and do more damage to you. But I mean, I was very, very careful not to, not to ever, you know, say any disparaging remarks about her. And I kind of welcomed her into the fold and included her into the whole procedure, like Valentine's Day. Come and have a ghostly experience on Valentine's Day. Um, Halloween, it was pretty easy. So you just never knew what to expect. That, that was it's very kind of you to incorporate her like that. Um, that I thought so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hey, they're trying to be in the mix. I mean, that's like that. Yeah. That's like when they did that for Casper. They made him part of the... <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought, you know, if she felt welcome and the staff would talk to her and stuff, I mean, if, they felt, if she felt welcome, we thought she would just, you know, have fun with us and, and never harm anybody. And, and uh, that approach seemed to, seemed to work. I mean, that's great. Did she ever, she did, so she did special things on Halloween. Um, Particularly on Valentine's Day, which were more noticeable. Things she yeah. would do on Halloween are less noticeable because, you know, I've got the DJ going, I've got everyone oh. dressed in outfits, and if lights go on and off at Halloween, it's like we could be doing it ourselves, you know what I mean? Uh, um, so Halloween, uh, we tried to incorporate, we made it into a ghost and went with that route. So people would come in dressed like ghosts and stuff, so I, it was an interesting mix i mean maybe sarah was even there dressed like a ghost no one knows right and halloween you never oh, know oh oh what's in your restaurant very true wow so maybe yeah, she came guys, home. We, we always said this theory that she was actually there on halloween we didn't even know it uh, i wonder has has with with technology now do you think sarah would ever like communicate through like a, a google home or like an alexa or some type of technology like that you know, it's an interesting question because I do have an Alexa at home, and I, and uh, once in a while I'll say, Alexa, turn off. It doesn't go off. 
say, Alexa, I'm talking to you. Turn off. It doesn't go off. You, okay. <laughs> What's happening here? Is Sarah in there? And then Alexa, turn off. Uh, I don't know. I suppose it would be possible. It's never really, I've never really felt her doing that. I mean, maybe my Alexa could have been nothing. It could have been Sarah. But um, I don't know. That's a very interesting question. It's a whole different era now of communication. So is Sarah aware of those ways we can communicate now? Did your workers well, ever see Sarah or have a physical encounter with her? Have they been yeah. haunted since? No, they haven't been affected since. Uh, there were uh, there was a couple of situations I can think of off the top of my head. Um, there was one time when my two bartenders were on the second floor, and uh, we had another bar on the downstairs floor on the main level, and then the office was on the third floor. And they saw me coming down in a red dress from out of the office into the down the stairs to go to the second bar, and uh, I I wouldn't be wearing a red dress. They knew that, and it was sort of questioning. Say Heather. And I answered downstairs on the main floor. I said, yeah, what? And he said, well, what are you doing down there? I said, because I'm standing down here at the door. And then they said, are you all right? This is, you know, and then I ran upstairs and I said, is everything okay? And they said, well, you were just standing there in a red dress. And we all knew it was Sarah. Um, and then the, I have a, my contractor who came in. Um, we had a major flood the day before we were going to open. And we assumed that was Sarah again. Um, and um, I had to hire another contractor to come in and rebuild it and he didn't believe any of this stuff when, we would, when he would hear noises and we'd say don't worry it's just Sarah and he went home one night um, and he was in bed with his wife and he heard uh, something in the closet so he got out of bed and he um, got something in his hand like a bat I don't remember what he had in his hand and he opened the closet door and it was me in a red dress and he screamed, and then his wife called me and said, what's going on? And I said, well, that's because your husband said he didn't believe in Sarah, so Sarah came to oh my God. tell him, show, oh. show him that she was there. I believe you, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, that, he, that, believed that, after, he believed after that. <sighs> like he would put down tools, and then he'd turn around and grab them, and they were, they'd be in another room. And he's a contra professional contractor, you know, they don't misplace things ever. And it happened to him a lot. And then he just kept saying, this can't be, this is impossible. And then she said, I guess she said, I'm going to show you. So she did. I wonder what she does with that stuff. <laughs> That's a good question. Now, okay, so now that we've talked about Sarah, I just want to know how this has affected your, like, your occult beliefs. Because before you didn't, you were... A somewhat of a skeptic, you were a non-believer, and yeah. after this, well, how has it affected your your beliefs? Well, I believe there's spirits out there. Um, it makes me wonder if we can actually focus and concentrate and try to concentrate on talking to the people that we would like to talk to, since I know now that they are there are they're out there. They're somewhere. Um, so it makes me wonder if I could ever reach somebody in my past that one of my loved ones or something. Um, but I certainly believe now that they're, that uh, they're out there and there's a, there's a whole never, another level to this life uh, in this world that I wasn't aware of or didn't believe before. This is a little disclaimer here. When I started doing the tarot card reading with Heather, the internet connection stopped working, my recording device stopped working, my computer started like, well it didn't crash, but like things stopped working and I couldn't get through the whole reading, I had to break it up. And so like, I don't know. I don't know who who's running interference that day. The forces that may be. Not blaming Sarah or anything, but I'm going to use this tarot deck because it's the modern witch deck, and I I don't know. I felt like I I was called to this, and then I have these gemstones that I picked up from my collection that I already feel like recommending because I'm like, okay, it's a good thing I picked out four because I was originally going to do one, and they all seem relevant uh, now that we've talked about it. But I want to know with these tarot cards, what this Heather, oh, need to know what you should okay. be made aware of. I guess as it relates to Sarah, but really, oh, oh, we have some jumpers. We got jumpers. All right, so we are going to do this tarot card reading. We have two jumpers already, but I'm going to do pull a few more cards. If you'll tell me when to stop shuffling. Now. 
right. Okay, okay. There's a lot of pentacles here. So the first card you have is the Knight of Pentacles. And this this represents new opportunities um, and research and doing a lot of like um, looking into business opportunities or ways to create side incomes or people coming towards you with opportunity or not, not even full blown developed opportunity, but like ideas. But it's it's this is like a full a full flush of like pentacles and energy, so it's very oriented around work. So then there's this nine of pentacles, um, where it represents confidence in what you're doing and how you earn your income and how you take care of your own lifestyle, your independence in that area of your life. But it's in reverse, so there's some type of well, there's a little bit of self doubt about doing things just on your own or being you're like you're not as brave as you used to be to do things on your own solely. But it's like people recognize you as someone who can. And they, they, the way that they perceive you is a little bit stronger than perhaps the way that you perceive yourself. So it's all a matter of flipping it over by changing the way your your perspective is. Like just flipping it and being like, well, you know what, I am that type of person. I, I actually am pretty good on my own and talking yourself into it. But usually that's the warning when it's in reverse. We have the Three of Pentacles here. This represents collaborations with people um, in the workplace as well or in business, any type of anything that um, involves money exchanging hands or just a collaboration of ideas, having a mastermind group, uh, collaborating with friends, it represents, and it's upright, it's a positive thing for you. So that should, I guess, I feel like, you know, there's the independence thing, but where you get your independence and you get your confidence is from what your friends say or what your support team says. Um, and it's really important to have that circle of people around you. Like, it's very important that they're stable and they're very earth energy based, so they're not emotional. Um, they're very, they're like intellectual, but they're more stable in their commitment than anything. And that's that's likely the most important thing is that they just do what they say they're gonna do. They're reliable. We have the Ace of Pentacles, another, um, it's another card that represents new opportunities, but again, in reverse. So in reverse means that it's, it's it's a slow opportunity to start or it's a, it's 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 new and and we're excited and we have like the idea and the ideas and inspirations around whatever it is we're getting started but it's not going as fast as we want or there's some things that are getting in the way there are blocks but i mean it, it's 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 like being excited about a new business and wanting it to do better than it is but you have to understand that timing is divine and you have to be patient with the path even if it's slow to start that may not be it may not be what is going to ultimately manifest. It's just about acknowledging that, yeah, things are cool. Things aren't, even if things aren't going well right away, it, that's not really telling of how it will be long term. We have the seven of wands, which means that you have to defend that. You have to defend everything about this spread, everything about your independence. You have to defend the people that have your back or the people that are around you that are, are strong, that represent this stability in the Three of Pentacles. Your team, essentially, like, you know, you, you it's like trusting in your team and, and not doubting them or not like, you know, like just leaving them be. It's like a laissez-faire attitude towards them, just trusting what they do instead of questioning it. Um, and new opportunities will come, things will work out. It's a, having that attitude and that energy towards your work life, your career, your businesses and the people that are involved and entangled in that. Um, the Seven of Wands is like, I, I, this, song, this card is usually like standing your ground and being defensive, but like this is almost like, it's not necessarily a leadership card, but it's almost like a glue card where you're, you have like this power or this energy about you that glues everyone together by the way that you are a strong defense. Um, and so I think that maybe that's a source of where you find some confidence is that you can be that person um, I feel like you do, this is a, this is also about protection. So creating protection that other people can't understand. Oh, there are you. I'm so sorry. I don't know what keeps happening. <laughs> no, it, it, it started freezing. It's, it's okay. Um, okay. So yeah, I was saying that I'm, I know it froze, but I did record the, the full reading. And okay. so when we, yeah, when we posted the whole thing, it'll be there. And, but like the last card that I didn't go over was the defense, but I think I, I did go over it a little bit, but it's basically that you are going to be the protection of all these things, all the aspects of the rest of the reading, um, that you have like a natural defense to you. So you do those things where you clear the energy, which is which a lot of people don't think is important, but it is, especially under a full moon, which we're under almost right now. And on October 31st, there's gonna be another full moon and people act weird during those times. People 
there are different there's more to it than what people think when it comes to energy and the bizarre behavior and the thoughts that cluster that are negative or or haunting people don't really think to defend their energy like that and you know protect their the the their circles and their spaces um but you do and that's really important for other people and the stones that i wanted to recommend for that is first one is a uh, smoky quartz i have one of these hanging out everywhere I go because it absorbs negative energy and because it's a, a quartz it's a smoky quartz crystal it amplifies that energy so it just I live next to a cemetery I feel spirits coming in through the window when I leave the the windows open or the doors open I see my cats looking at them and I leave this near I leave this in my bedroom it's because I no, because they need to go when it's night lights out another thing I have is the sulfur stone which also dissipates negative energy. Um, everyone is, you know, it's a pretty common stone and smell. It smells like gasoline. It's, it's, it's the sulfur that you think it is. Um, and it also dispels negative energy. I, li I like to have as many crystals that are black around, like black tourmaline, jet, or uh, obsidian, snowflake obsidian, any of those just to keep some grounding energy around. So when you use the bloodstone and the phantom quartz together, the bloodstone is for you, your voice to be heard to wherever you project it, whether it's small, whether it's in your head, just it's so that you are heard. So this is like when you're talking to Sarah and you're like, I need you to leave, or I, you know, with all due respect, I need you to leave, or I need, well, you know, anything that you'd like to communicate, this is important, especially with regular people, this works. It just gives you the words so that your, your words land on the person correctly like it's in a it, you choose the words that are said in a way that the person you're speaking to understands so it may be different for every single person but this this stone uh radiates that type of energy that helps you find the, the right words the right word phrases the right combinations and then this stone is the phantom quartz and it's a quartz within a quartz and it helps you connect with um your spirit guides angels any type of ascended being um, it, it, it helps you um, understand what is being communicated towards you and it helps you uh, interpret things a little clearly whether that be through your dreams or just through meditation so this is a, a great meditative story and stone and it points up to the sky so that the energy is channeled through you so that you can understand clearly and so that you don't feel like blocked or like hot and, and sweaty and not at ease when you do it so those you know, these are the stones that like I feel like, you know, we could have a really we could have a party with Sarah. Maybe get a love stone, a, a rose quartz in there because she's she wants romance and stuff. But I would just for a safe communication and then, you know, all right, see your way out, Sarah. Right? It's been fun. You know, it's it's nothing personal. It's just I need some time to myself. So that you can really feel at peace and not feel like she might pop in whenever she wants. So it could be on your terms. Okay. Wonderful. All right, there it is. That was the Paranormal Shift interview with Heather. Stay tuned for the next interview. I will not spoil it, but what I will spoil is the surprise from the beginning of the video. Remember I mentioned a prize, remember? Well, here it is. It's a T&E merch prize bag, uh, right? So it's gonna include a sweater like this right and other stuff okay so if you guys want to win one you're gonna to have to answer this mind-bending question it's, it's pretty simple but let us know in the comments below and we will be picking one lucky viewer so here's the question what color dress was Sarah wearing when Heather saw her okay so answer that in the questions below and we will pick one lucky winner to send a teeny merch prize pack to it's gonna be great because we're gonna have a happy healthy. I can feel it. Right? And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.